Hi folks, and welcome to part 3 of painting this Necron Royal Warden. If you haven't seen the other two parts of this tutorial, why not go back in the playlist and check those out. In this episode, we'll be focusing on the red glowing energy coming from inside of his chest and on the hoses on his gun. It was painted at the same time as the bayonet, but for ease of learning, I have done them as separate videos. So, without any further ado, let's cue the music. To start out with, I'm going to be applying a couple of thin layers of deep red from scale 75 onto the cabling areas and the areas that we wish to be glowing on this Necron Royal Warden. With this paint, it's quite thin and you'll probably find that you need to do two or three thin coats, thin down with a little bit of water to make sure that you get nice, smooth, even coverage. If you don't have the reds from scale 75, then there are several shades from Vallejo and from Games Workshop that are almost like for like matches. I just happen to like the really matte finish that Scale 75 have on their paints. And don't be worried if you don't cover on the first thin pass. That's absolutely normal and to be expected. It's better to build up in thin layers than it is to do one thick coat and then clog up any details or not get the control that you need. It's always better to have thinner paint and take your time than it is to try and get a nice solid coverage on the first pass. Here I'm just applying little dots into the red area. I'm not being particularly neat. We're going to be doing some glowing effects out of these so any little spillage over on the underside isn't too bad and we don't want to worry about it too much. However, do try to be as neat as possible with these to really help control your layering and glazing later on for the glowing effects. When coming to paint the areas, such as the grooves in the chest, don't feel that you have to do this with the original size brush that you've been doing the cabling and the dots with. Um, if you feel like you're going to get better control from using a smaller size brush in these grooves and recessed details, then absolutely go ahead and switch out the brush. If you make a mistake, don't worry about it. Just wait for the paint to dry and then take your base coat silver and neaten up around the edges. We're going to be doing some glow effects later on, so having the base coat silver should be enough and we'll, the glowing effects will hide any mistakes that we make down the line. We will be starting the glow at this very early stage in the process of painting the red. To do this, I have thinned the deep red a little bit more than normal and I'm painting onto the metal carapace and the metal armour itself where light leakage would happen and where reflections would start to be. For example, onto his cheeks underneath the eyes underneath the red dots on the upper barrel and along the top of the barrel for showing it gleaming off the under barrel. As you can see some of this might look like it's a bit of a pinky metallic but don't worry that's absolutely fine and it will be the effect that we're going for. If you shine a red light onto silver it does start to get a bit more of a pinky desaturated look and that's perfect for the glowing effects that we're going to do. Even though we go to warmer colours later on this pinky sheen is absolutely perfect. The next colour I'll be using is Blood Red from Scale 75. Once again I have thinned this with a bit of water and I'm going over the areas that painted with the deep red but on the cables covering about three quarters of the cable leaving the shadows in the darkest area of the original paint colour and then painting in the centre of the dots. Trying to leave some of the original base colour uh, around the edges of the dots because we're going to try and make a conical tone going from dark red to almost to orange in the middle of those dots. With the cabling you don't have to be super neat with the blend but each time you put a thin coat on paint a slightly less area than usual and you'll get that nice blend starting to appear. With this don't worry about getting it wrong or making mistakes everybody makes mistakes. I think I made a few mistakes on this miniature. If you think you've covered too much of your area with the blood red colour just wait for the paint to dry and come back in with the darker red that you had from your base coat. When it comes to the areas in his chest start to focus towards the middle leaving the darker red tones to the left and to the right of the gap in his chest. This shows like it's got a really hot almost lava core and the really 
these strong tones are going to be at the center of this where it's showing the most vibrancy and brightness of color and with this even with this just this first pass of a brighter red you can really see that just having that very thin almost glaze of that deep red giving that pinkish hue is really starting to sell our glow effect Here I'm doing another pass of the blood red just to reinforce that original colour. I have also done another little bit of glazing with the original deep red from scale 75 on the rectangular bar between the like hoses and the bayonet on his gun just underneath the second barrel. Just into that corner I've done a little bit of that pinkish hue so we get that really nice transition from a very dark metal into a glowing red which I think is quite nice. Next, I'll be coming in with some Antares Red, once again from scale 75, and I'll be focusing on a slightly smaller area than we covered with the previous red tone to start building up the intensity and the glow effects, both on his chest, the gun, and on the cabling. In order to maximize the contrast between the dark areas and the light areas on the hoses and the glowing areas in his chest and his eyes, you'll probably want to use not too much of this paint. We want to really emphasize that there is a small area of high contrast with very bright in a very specific point. So if we focus on a small area, it will really allow us to sell that effect. For the last step, I'm going to be coming in with some Mars Orange from scale 75. And with this, we're going to put in our hottest, brightest highlight on the red glowing areas. What I've done here on this cable is done a small stripe of the Mars Orange, cleaned off my brush, and then I'm using the damp brush to feather out into the surrounding colour. This allows me to get a nice, subtle transition, which I can then reinforce with a second straight line to give us a nice transition between the red and the more orangey tones. When it comes to the dots on the barrel of his gun, I'm just putting a tiny reflex highlight in the corners. Again with the rest of the cables, I'm doing exactly the same as I did on the one on his gun. When it comes to the areas within his chest, I'm looking to go towards the middle and making a very small dot right in the centre of that area and that really helps sell that glowing effect. It's that really hot orange centre like it's sort of that that living lava-like metal that's seeping out glowing onto the carapace. And with that, the red glowing areas of this Necron Royal Warden are now complete. This was part three in the tutorial series of this Necron Royal Warden Next we'll go have a look at all the golden brass trimming details on this model. If you like this video, uh, why not consider subscribing? It's free in charge and you'll get videos in your feed just like this one. See you next time folks.